like 99% magnetite or substantial. Well, here we are. Black, and then the white is coarse. Here we are at the beach. And we're between Rio Teta and San Carlos Point. There's San Carlos Point out there. Way out there. And we go across the horizon there. And down there is Rio Tinto. The famous Rio Tinto. Here we are in beautiful Rio Teta. This was a favorite spot of mine. We used to surf this place. There's a little swell coming in. Little set. Of course, it's a, it's a high tide and it's a onshore wind. Onshore wind, but there were some really perfect waves out there. And now we're going to go over to Rio Teta. Well, here we are at Rio Teta. The beautiful Rio Teta. It's been a long time since I've been here. And, uh, why look, there's somebody here. Who's this fella here? Why that looks like, that looks like Doug Allen. Hey, Doug Allen. Hi. How are you? Good, how you doing? Hey, Doug. Yeah. Can you tell me something? Can you tell me something? Sure. Tell me, tell me about those early days when you started surfing and enjoying Rio Teta. Well, it was earlier, it was more like Rio Mar. We moved to Teta and other places later because we had the house in Rio Mar. And then we moved to Gorgona. We used to surf Stanley's there in Malibu. And then later on, you know, we always went to whatever beach the, the crowd was going. We had all our friends and stuff, so we kind of heard around together a lot too. So we did all, we surfed everywhere. Now I understand you're in some kind of conservation movement to to save Rio Teta from pollution, is yeah, that? There's developers that have, like about 10 years ago, one person wanted to uh, dam the river, like for uh, micro hydroelectric, but it was more to steal the water than for the hydroelectric, because this river doesn't give enough water and store enough for the rainy season. And then now more recently, we have a, a village by the bridge that has a giant septic tank, and they put the runoff into the river. It's supposed to be a sewage treatment plant, but you walk by there, there's no denying that it's uh, black water. And also, this, this group that owns a golf community up the road here, he wants to suck half the water on a given day of the dry season out to send it to his golf course, and th therefore negatively impact the ecology of this area. This area is home to uh, at least one endangered species, a plant, and and it, uh, apart from the dam 10 years ago, which we managed to uh, detain long enough to stop it, they uh, do uh, they have a block of houses development, and because they own next to the river, they want to suck the water out of the river across their land, across the highway to another one they own, with Vista Mar, where they have a golfing community and a marina, and. We're in an area called the Arco Seco de Panama, the dry arc. There's less rainfall, less water in this area going down to the central provinces. And that's why like in the Spanish colonial times, it was a more desirable place to live because there was less rain, less bugs, less malaria, etc. So the other community called the village next to the bridge, they have very small cookie cutter houses, prefab practically, and they are putting all of their effluent into a tank, they call it a sewage treatment tank, but the tank, we, I could show you exactly where it comes out, it, it's right there, raw water flowing into the river. 
So the, that's the two uh, present threats that the river has now. One of them where they want to suck half the water out on a given dry season day when they made their study and send it to the golf course. And the other one is a pollution of human effluent, untreated or very partially treated sewage getting into the river. Well, thank you very much, Doug, for sharing with us uh, what's going on here. We really appreciate it. More than welcome. Really, you know, sound, you know? There it is, folks, beautiful real Tetra. Unfortunately, it's high tide. You can't see how great these waves are when, you're, when the tide is just right. But anyways, we had some great days out here. Great fun with our buddies. This place was discovered by Scott Williams and, and Butch Nearing. We used to call it the spot. And we used to call it the spot. And before that, they gave it a nickname, the oven. Because when they first walked out on the, on the sand here, it was super hot and they burned their feet. So that was one of the nicknames for Rio Tetra. But anyways, them trying to keep this place from becoming polluted and, and overdeveloped and, and, and just trying to talk to people about common sense, you know, about respecting your environment. Anyways, this is a great place and we're glad for, for Doug's uh, effort to, to preserve this place and, and make it a, a safe place for all. Well, folks, this is, this is a, a, an abandoned uh, shrimp larvae uh, sir, uh, place. And uh, they were growing little shrimps there for shrimp farming. And look at, look at this here. They were pumping the water from here. Look at this. Somebody came out and stuck some concrete in there. Didn't like their their, uh, their pollution, polluting, polluting the beach here. Isn't that, a, isn't that an eyesore, though, folks? Beautiful beach like this, and you come up to this eyesore, and now it's abandoned. They don't even work there anymore. Has no no production whatsoever.